They say that God works in mysterious ways. They also say that if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. In 1980, in Athens, Georgia, a little band was formed. This band would go on to be one of our nation's biggest rock and roll bands and frankly, one of my favorite bands. Of course, I'm talking about R.E.M. Currently, R.E.M. is a Grammy award-winning band with multiple hits, multiple albums. But by 1981, they were ready to film their first hit singles music video, Radio Free Europe. They decided to film this music video in Somerville, Georgia at a local folk artist house. This folk artist already had a little bit of a reputation. After all, he had some paintings in the Smithsonian and already had been picked up by Esquire magazine. But the relationship this folk artist would make with R.E.M. would end up blowing up this folk artist to international fame. Now, this folk artist was also a Baptist minister. And the relationship that Michael Stipe, the lead singer of R.E.M., and this folk artist Baptist minister had brought me to tears while I was researching for this story. Now, before we go any further, please remember to hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we're gonna to be talking about Howard Finster's Paradise Garden. Finster was born in Valley Head, Alabama on December 2nd, 1916 to Samuel and Lula Finster. He was one of 13 children. Now, Valley Head, Alabama is about 22 miles to Somerville, Georgia. If you can remember from our last video on Corpsewood Manor, you'll remember I said that Somerville was a town that I was very familiar with because we used to drive through Somerville to get to my parents' lake house in Mintone, Alabama. Now, the thing about Howard Finster's Paradise Garden is as a child, I spent many, 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 many weekends at this garden. It was something we did when we would drive to the lake house. We would just stop and go explore his artwork. And Valley Head, Alabama is actually five miles from Mintone, Alabama, where my parents' lake house was. Now, if you're familiar with Mintone, Alabama, Mintone, Alabama also hosts Camp Skyline for girls, Camp Laney for boys. It is a tiny, tiny, a tiny town. In fact, when I was a kid, there wasn't even a stoplight in Mintone. It was just a crosswalk with a stop sign. That might be different now, but when I was a kid in the 90s, that's all Mintone really was. Now, Valley Head being five miles from Mintone, Alabama, means that Valley Head is probably just as small as Mintone. And I'm saying this because even though Howard Fenster was born in Valley Head, Alabama, and had his garden in Somerville, Georgia, they were all kind of right there together in the same vicinity. Now, Howard Finster claimed that he started to get visions at the age of three. He says that he remembers one of his sisters who passed away prior coming down in a white gown and telling Howard Finster, Howard, you're going to be a man of visions. And what a lot of people are aware of, if they are aware of Howard's folk art, is that Howard Finster did not have much of an education. He started school at the age of six and he finished school in the sixth grade. That's about 12 years old. But God definitely had a plan for Howard Finster. In fact, it appears that Howard Finster's life was about the all-consuming love of God. You see, by the age of 13, Howard had become a born-again Baptist. And by the age of 16, he was already preaching. And from the age of 16 to 24, Howard would go on to preach 
part-time and write articles regarding the Gospels in between. And then in 1940, he became a full-time preacher. And then in the late 1940s, Howard's life seemed to shift a little bit. He decided that he was going to start to create folk art. And so he bought a piece of land and he started to create this garden out of basically what we would consider trash. And then a little over a decade later, Howard ran out of space in his first plot of land. So he decided to go into Somerville and to buy four more acres. This plot of land was going to become something like the Garden of Eden. Now, as I said earlier, Howard didn't really have an education. He didn't even have an art education. And so looking at what he created is quite remarkable the amount of popularity that was gathered from his creations in 1965 howard decided that he was going to retire from preaching from a pulpit and just use his art to spread the love and the word of god and then in 1975 esquire magazine caught wind of this southern Baptist preacher and his garden of folk art. They came down to do a piece on him. They are the ones that gave his garden the title Paradise Garden. And then by 1977, four of his paintings ended up in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, DC. Now around this time, Howard Fensner had another vision from God. God was going to use Howard to again spread his love through his art. He decided that he was going to create 5,000 pieces of art that would depict certain Bible verses. Now the interesting thing about the art is they had pop culture icons like Elvis Presley and Ronald Reagan and in fact some of his artwork displays UFOs and aliens and Bible verses. In order to keep up with how many paintings he had done, because remember in his vision, God told him to create 5,000 paintings, he would number them. And so out there today are pieces of his work that are numbered. Now he finished this assignment on Christmas Eve of 1985. As I said in the opening, it was in 1981 that REM recorded Radio Free Europe in Paradise Gardens. So around this time of intense discipleship for God, Howard Finster was becoming very close to a lead singer of a rock and roll band. And in fact, Michael Stipe and Howard Finster became so close that he created a song on their third album in homage to Howard Finster. This was the song Math and Legends. And down below in the description box, I will have a link to the song Math and Legends as well as to Radio Free Europe where you can still see from the grainy video Paradise Gardens. Now Michael Stipe and R.E.M. would also go on to collaborate with Howard Finster for the artwork for their album cover, which then leads us to the band Talking Heads. And in 1985, Talking Heads commissioned Howard Finster to do their album cover as well. And in fact, this album cover was recognized by Rolling Stone magazine as one of the greatest album, album covers of the day. Now, it's probably of great curiosity why a Baptist minister turned folk artist would become so close to a lead singer of a rock and roll band. Our ideas of the Baptist church or conservative fundamentalist church today consist of preachers preaching through fear and living a life of rules in order to win God's grace. But here's the thing about Howard Fenster, and I never knew him personally. Like I said, I've been to his garden many times, but from what I saw in his interviews, he exuded love. He was fascinated by the love of God. This love was so blinding to him that for him it appeared, in my opinion, that he didn't care what lifestyle another person lived because in his eyes, everybody, regardless of who they were, was worthy of the love of God. 
And in fact, everybody was given a life path by God. In my personal opinion, Howard Fenster would be what I would consider a guru. You see, a lot of us are living in a third dimensional world. But I believe that Howard Finster, like Albert Einstein, Nikola Tesla, the Buddha, was a fourth dimensional being, like Jesus. Some people refer to Howard Finster as possibly insane. Here was this kooky guy who didn't really have an education and was so hyper-focused on creating art in the glory of God that he didn't even seem to register perhaps how famous he had become. But that didn't matter to him. What mattered to him was being in this state of love and sharing it with the world. In fact, you can find many, 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 many interviews of Howard back in the day his accent is so Southern and so thick that maybe for some of you, you'll have a hard time understanding him. Even for me, someone from the South, I had to go back and re-listen to really understand what he was saying. But regardless of whether he was on Johnny Carson or any other talk show, he came on with this abundance of inspiration and love for fellow human beings. Was he having visions? Or was there something wrong with him mentally? I don't know. I happen to believe though, in my opinion, that he was having visions and that maybe for him, there was a part of his brain that was unlocked that a lot of us have locked up. That he had this unique ability to see beyond the veil and to understand what the meaning of being alive is all about. You see, when I go to India to study yoga, my teacher's teacher had a line where he would say, everywhere looking, God seeing. And I believe that that is true for Howard Finster. Everywhere looking, God seeing. And in fact, in one interview, Howard Finster said that he wasn't trying to start a new religion. He was just trying to live and be in the glory of God as it was. And my teacher in India has said that the only true religion out there is humanity. And even though Howard Finster grew up in the South and was technically a Baptist, I believe, in my opinion, that Howard Finster and my teacher believe the same thing, that the only true religion is humanity because that's where the glory of God lives. Sadly, Howard Fenster passed away on October 22nd, 2001, well into his 80s. But his work and his lineage is left for us in his Paradise Gardens. You can still go to Paradise Gardens today in Somerville, Georgia, very close to where our Corpsewood murders took place. So ideally, you could probably go to two of the, both of the locations in the same day. Now it does cost $15 per adult and about 10, five to $10 for children. I will link the website below. When you're in the garden, you will go through a maze of artwork, of junk that has been sculpted and created. And in fact, while you're in Paradise Gardens, you will see the five story folk art chapel. You will see the mirror house, the Bible house, and the hubcap tower. And again, as somebody who has been to Paradise Gardens many, 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 many times, you will definitely feel the love coming from Howard Fenster and his work. If you live in Atlanta, there is an exhibit of Howard Fenster's art at the High Museum right here in Midtown, actually about a block away from where I live. It's a limited number of his pieces. I would definitely suggest trying to get up to Somerville if you have the chance to actually go to his garden, but the High Museum will work too. And I hope as we continue to grow as people that we end up carrying the love that Howard Finster had for all humans, that impeccable love of God.
All right, guys, thank you so much for sitting through another story. This one was a happier story, kind of a little break from our murders and our ghost stories, but something I definitely wanted to cover because it is such a fantastic thing to have here in Georgia. And maybe for some of you who aren't super familiar, maybe you're a little bit young and you're not super familiar with REM, go check them out. They're a really awesome band. And in fact, they're still in Athens. In some exciting news, I have some awesome interviews lined up for this week. So hopefully by next week, we'll have some more people on this channel to tell you some stories and give you some more information. But until then, as always, thank you to Josh McKay for our music, another musician living in Athens, Georgia, and to Todd Roderick for doing our editing. And if you guys wanna follow us on social media, we're on Instagram at Esoteric Atlanta, and we're also now on Twitter. Once again, I'm not that great at Twitter. I kind of forget we have it, but we're there as well, and I usually do post the videos to Twitter once they load up. And that is also linked down below too, so you can just click on the link from our description box. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye. No